Good morning, everyone. I'm Tom Cook in the Eyewitness Newsroom. Breaking news about a police chase that began in Webster just a short time ago as we go to Sky Eye. As you see, police chasing his driver of a white pickup truck speeding along South Gessner now. At least that's the current location where he was just a couple of minutes ago. He came all the way across Beltway 8 from Webster and then proceeded to go south on Gessner. He was on the feeder road for quite a while. It is apparently two men in the truck. At least that's what we think at this point. We're told it's a couple of robbers suspects and uh, he is going in and out of lanes in the opposite direction now again this white pickup truck smashed in front end as you see him speeding along South Gester now police have been chasing him for about 15 minutes or so and uh, we are trying to figure out exactly where he is headed right now he has been driving at speeds up to about 80 miles an hour and we go to sky eye and a reporter in sky Andy Bass what can you tell us from your vantage point Andy uh, we just caught up with this gentleman, these two gentlemen in this white pickup truck right at Gessner as he exited off the uh, westbound side of the feeder road of the uh, south belt. Um, uh, we did hear that he cracked up somewhere along Gessner, and I guess that's how he got the front end damage on that vehicle. Uh, when we first got on scene with him, he was actually in the uh, in the westbound lanes, or I'm sorry, the northbound lanes, which he just went over the meteor road right there. Uh, he is still on Gessner heading southbound in the southbound direction right now, uh, speeding excessively throughout this entire area. Uh, uh, this guy, I did have a hard time catching up with him. He was doing about 90 miles an hour when we first got here on scene. Uh, now we're with him right now. I can tell you there were several units behind him. HPD helicopter has also been dispatched, and they're on their way to help out. Uh, so that's all we have right now for uh, from here. Thank you, Andy. As we watch him, look at him cut through the intersections at high speed, just barely missing a couple of cars there now. And again, he continues on this chase. And I can't tell exactly, Andy, how far police units are behind him at this point. Uh, Sky, obviously, right over and will uh, continue to track his location and perhaps help police locate this guy if they are losing track of him. Uh, do you see any police units far behind him, Andy? I did pull out just a little bit, Tom, just a little while ago to see if I could see any, and there's not any, right any in the immediate uh, behind him. I did see when we were uh, trying to catch up to him on the belt, I did see a lot of police units behind him. Uh, but uh, like you said, he's uh, he's uh, you know going pretty fast on Gessner right now, trying to evade, uh, uh, avoid any traffic that's in front of him. And uh, you know, as much as he slows down, I'm sure the police have to do the same to get to uh, to get to him. Yeah. And this is in an area of Gessner that's under construction, as you see, just two of the lanes open in what should be a four-lane road. He continues to pass cars, although he is slowing down a little bit in between cars, trying to get in now on the right, going any way he can to get around the traffic on South Gessner this morning. And I believe this leads into another four-lane portion of Gessner that is not under construction from here, Andy, so maybe this will widen out and we'll get a chance to see if police can catch up to him. Yeah, we just passed the Fort Bend Toll Road right behind him, and there's an officer getting a little closer to him as well. Uh, we're coming up into the Missouri City area, uh, just a little bit east of the Fort Bend Toll Plaza on Gessner. Um, so, yeah, uh, definitely they've caught up to him as he had to slow down to avoid traffic in front of him. Let me pull out just a little bit more right. to see if we can see anything in front of him. And, no, he's got wide open right now, a couple of cars, but for the most part, he is wide open on, uh, on, the, on Gessner. And he should... Uh, shortly be approaching, well, he was headed toward Fort Bend County before, and then, as we said, turned south on Gessner. I guess this is uh, heading toward Pearland as we speak. We should uh, start reaching the outskirts of Pearland in just a couple of minutes from now. This is really uh, an undeveloped area for the most part, as you see the surrounding uh, area, but he'll head into a uh, residential area. And now we are told he is eastbound on McCard. We have just lost that shot from Sky HD. We'll go back to it as soon as we can. Again, we're following that police chase that began in Webster about 15 to 20 minutes ago. Went west on the belt all the way into Fort Bend County and now he is headed west on McCard Road. So he has uh, continued to make his way and we'll try and go back to Sky HD if we can pick up the signal from Andy Bass. Now, we, well, there we go. Andy Bass, we're back with you. Can you tell us, um, give us an idea of where he is headed now? Yeah, he's on East, which is major road just south of the South Belt, McCart eastbound. We've just passed the Fort Bend Toll Road, so we're in the Missouri City of Limits, I believe. Um, still heading eastbound along McCart Road. I believe he's on the approach to maybe 35 telephone area, maybe McCowell right now. Uh, it's very hard to see in front of me, but uh, that's where he's at. He's eastbound McCart Road uh, throughout the Fort Bend area.
Okay, and he is just apparently a few miles away from 288, headed that way very, very quickly. Um, he is apparently dragging behind something off his bumper there. If you can zoom in just a little bit, Andy, I'm not exactly sure if that's debris from the crash that happened earlier or if that's just part of the rear bumper. But in any case, he's dragging that as a smashed in front end, but uh, is still able to drive along at high speeds. As he certainly gets close to 288, we'll see more traffic as he approaches that intersection from there, Andy. Yes, sir, absolutely, Tom. I'm trying to get a look ahead of us to see how much traffic he's going to encounter heading eastbound along McCard Road. Uh, you know, it's not a very heavily traveled road at this time, which is not good news for him or not good news for the police, I should say. But um, definitely uh, still traveling high speeds. Sky High is definitely having a hard time keeping up with him. We are getting back into Hobby's airspace, so we definitely have to watch out for, you know, any planes taking off from Hobby Airport as he continues eastbound along McCard Road. But he is now coming up to Macau Road. There's Macau's train tracks. And you you see just went right through that intersection. No regard for anyone else in that intersection as well, but you see the cars starting to look behind them and they're starting to spread apart to give this guy a little bit more room. So as he continues eastbound McCard Road, you know, I do still, still see s s several officers behind him, but they're still a ways away. Yeah, pu pull back just a little bit, Andy. Give me an idea of how close the officers are and can you tell what department they're from? I know it was Webster officers that began the chase initially. Right, that was down at 45 in El Dorado when they initially picked him up, and it could still be Webster police on there. I believe that is a Webster police I officer right. still in pursuit of him. I'm going to try to get a little closer. Uh, nope, that's Houston. So we do have a Houston, or maybe it's Webster. That's hard to tell. I think it's Webster's colors. Yeah, I think you're right, Andy. It looked like a Webster police car. It's very difficult to tell, obviously, from that vantage point. But uh, I think I could but now you Webster got on the side of the police car. Now you've got at least three squads behind him. Uh, there were earlier reports that this driver is armed, was a an armed robber, or at least a robbery suspect that they began chasing, apparently, after a robbery about 30 minutes ago. And as he comes close to Highway 288, this guy gets in the airspace of Hobby Airport. We may have to uh, discontinue our aerial surveillance of this chase very shortly, but we'll keep with it as long as we can and watch this driver. He is just uh, speeding probably, what, 80 miles an hour or so, Andy? Uh, close to that. We're pulling in as much power as we can in Sky Eye, and we're doing about 90, 95 right now, and he's actually walking away from us, which is actually pretty scary to see how fast he really is going down there. Yeah, and you've got a great vantage point to see just how close those police officers are. And now he's in the right-hand lanes, passing people on the right, getting around them any way he can. He has been able to avoid any kind of accidents at intersections so far, although he apparently, as you saw earlier, Andy, had a minor accident on uh, uh, he, as he approached Fort Bend County. Yeah, he had a, we heard that he cracked up somewhere around Gessner, uh, just a little bit south of the belt, and now he's getting on. It looks like 288. It looks like he's going inbound on 288, and that's where he's getting on right now. Uh, so he's looking lucky he's getting back to the freeway. But yes, uh, he did, we did get reports that he did crack up somewhere around Gessner, just a little bit south of the south belt. Uh, when we caught up with him, that's when we noticed the front end damage to the front end. And you also see the debris hanging on, uh, on the back end of him as well. Uh, but that's where we caught up with him. But obviously, the crack up didn't slow him down any. All four tires are still intact you know just a minor body damage which is not preventing him to slow down at all now is he headed northbound in 288 now is that where he uh, got under the freeway that is where he is is in inbound 288 yes sir just from a card road so he's going to be approaching the belt here momentarily okay he has almost come full circle as we said this chase began in webster it went west on the south beltway then he turned left or south on gessner and then he started going east on mccard road and now he is back on the northbound the lanes of Highway 288, and he will soon come up and approach the city limits of Houston once again. But as you see, three squad cars, at least three that we see, in close pursuit behind this robbery suspect. Uh, somebody apparently, uh, you know, apparent robbery attempt in Webster is how this chase began. And he just crossed over the belt. He just went underneath the belt, so he is now still on uh, the northbound. I believe the feeder road of 288. I believe he got off the main lanes. Didn't know. I guess. I guess now he's going off into the into the grassy area here, trying to get over on. I don't know exactly what he's trying to do. I don't, I don't think he know knows either. what he's trying to do. He is pulling over, and <laughs> this is apparently where they will make that arrest. Here is the end of this police chase now, and we'll watch it from a distance. Robert got now to the driver's side of the truck. It looks to be only one person in there, hands in the air, and police will put the cuffs on him right there. And this is just north 
of the Beltway on Highway 288. He pulled over on the side of the northbound lanes into that grass area, and this is where the chase finally comes to an end, and we'll try and figure out why he fled in the first place, what kind of crime he had committed, if any, and uh, where police officers uh, started chasing him in the first place. But Andy Bass, the end of this police chase, uh, just outside the Houston city limits, right? Yeah, that is correct. We were just uh, just north of the South Belt and inside the Houston city limits. Uh, I can tell you that we're right on the approach to, it looks like, um, Orem Drive. So yeah, it's right there. And, uh, you know, it ended peacefully, believe it or not. Thank God nobody else was hurt and uh, no other tragedies happened. Yeah, and you see the police officers sort of high-fiving each other. They bring this chase to, a, I guess, a peaceful end. Certainly, the man came out of the car, hands raised. There were reports that he was armed earlier. I did not see them take any weapons out of the truck, but uh, that doesn't mean there aren't any in there. And there was only one person that we know in the truck. I don't see anybody in the passenger side. I didn't see anybody get out of the passenger side. Even though there were reports earlier, they were chasing two men in a pickup truck. Yeah, Tom, I looked, I saw when they looked in the driver's side to see if there was anyone else in the truck. They did not pull anyone else out. I'm sure they're going to do a, a nice uh, search of that vehicle to see if what else is in there. Uh, maybe the, the the items that he robbed from that store down in the Webster area when police first got the call on there. You see him being stuffed right there in the back of the car. Uh, so, yeah, they're going to probably research this, make sure that there are no other weapons and return the stolen items that he did steal. Yeah, and I see there are Webster units on the scene. Were there any others? Oh, an HPD officer in the back of that uh, pickup truck. So there were other police departments involved as he made his way all the way across the city of Houston into Fort Bend County, but at least in close pursuit were three units from the Webster Police Department. You're just joining us at the end of a police chase that's lasted about 15 minutes, began in Webster, went west on the Beltway, and he made a full circle coming north on Highway 288, just north of the Beltway. He was arrested just a couple of minutes ago. And we'll bring you continuing coverage of this on Eyewitness News at 11 a.m., but for now, I'm Tom Cook in the Eyewitness Newsroom. We'll see you at 11. Sixteen times the speed you get with Uver.